This is Jack with Iconic Adventures. Welcome to this full ship tour of the beautiful Norwegian Spirit. The Norwegian Spirit underwent a major $100 million renovation in 2020, just as the pandemic was starting, and still looks really, really fresh. So we're gonna take a full ship tour from the top deck all the way to the lowest public area. So come along, let's check it out. Up on deck 13, near the front of the ship, we've got the multi-function room. This room serves as a library, game room. This room is almost always really quiet. Uh, very few people, I think, even know about this room. It's not used for any sort of regularly scheduled activities. So a good place to get away from the hustle and bustle of the ship, uh, relax. Uh, you can step outside the top deck there and get some nice views. Uh, so they've got a number of games that are provided as well as uh, daily Sudoku and uh, trivia if you're into that kind of thing. So here's the uh, sun deck that's just outside that multi-function room which you can see there in the background. So the multi-function room is right in the middle of the front of the ship. We've got sun decks on each side and then there's a catwalk that goes out to the very front of the ship. So we're going to check out this catwalk. This middle area here where there's no people, that's a technical area for the crew with some of the equipment, but there's a catwalk here that goes all the way around that's available to the public for viewing, and that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we're actually at the uh, Hubbard Glacier. There's a look at that multifunction room again in the background. That's a skylight for the lounge that's underneath. And then looking out the very front of the ship. Here's the beer garden on deck 13. The beer garden is uh, one of the bars up on the top level. Lots of variety here. And lots of seating that we're going to take a look at in a second. So some comfortable sofas here, tables. Uh, quite a variety of seating options here. So we've got the sofas. You can see the uh, table and chairs in the background, a good view looking over the pool deck. Here's some more of those seating alternatives. So this one side of the beer garden you can see the ashtrays that was available for smokers. Uh, the other side uh, was not available, it was non-smoking. Uh, the red path there is the jogging path. We'll walk down that in a minute. And we've got these bar stools and another shot looking down on the pool deck. You've got four hot tubs, uh, one on each corner of the pool. So this is an Alaska cruise. The, the hot tubs did get used uh, during the day. It's pretty early in the morning right now. Uh, really didn't see anybody use the pool for good reason. So we're going to walk down the jogging path a little bit. You can see how it juts out right here um, outside this wall. So this is an attempt to you know, separate the walkers and the joggers from the people that are just uh, walking and wandering around the sun deck. A good place to walk on a morning like this, as you can see, the seas are pretty calm, not a lot of wind. Uh, it's not very busy up here uh, in the morning. Of course, the sun comes up pretty early in Alaska in the summertime. So also, also up here on deck 13, uh, we've got a couple of uh, sports areas. So we're gonna walk down this jogging path here and uh, check out the uh, golf area. So pretty easy to get the equipment, uh, it's no cost. Uh, a few people would come up here and just you know, hit the ball against the bullseye. And then there's a basketball court on the other side of deck 13. Also have uh, some soccer goals uh, if you want to kick the soccer ball around. And so this would get a little bit of activity during the day. Uh, people come out here and shoot some hoops. A 
all the way now to the back of the ship. You can see, still see the uh, jogging path. One of the really nice things about the Norwegian Spirit is it's got all this open public space on the back of the ship. So we're up on deck 13. And then we're gonna look over the railing here and you can see how it's tiered. And so there's seating up below on 12 and then more seating on 11. And then down there on 10 at the bottom, we've got another pool and two more hot tubs looking straight out the back of the ship. Uh, those uh, lounge chairs have really thick, uh, comfortable cushions. Uh, so really nice area to uh, hang out. Uh, you're pretty well protected from the wind, so it's pretty comfortable. So here's the Spinnaker Observation Lounge. Uh, we're at the very front of the ship now on deck 12. You've got really tall floor to ceiling windows um, on all three sides. So left, right, front. Really nice views um, out of the Spinnaker Observation Lounge. A lot of seating. So this is a pretty big space. Uh, it does get used uh, for some events, uh, game shows, uh, some music. But not as busy during the mornings. So you've got a lot of people just coming in here to read and relax and enjoy the views. On the very uh, left and the right of the front, you've got some uh, areas that jut out that are you know, directly uh, in line with the, uh, the bridge. And so those are pretty, pretty nice places to sit and you can really enjoy those views. Uh, so here, uh, this particular morning, they had a continental breakfast set up that we just saw a second ago. Uh, and then uh, the bar was also open, a really, really pretty bar area. Okay, we're gonna take a peek in the Humidor Cigar Lounge. Uh, this is uh, accessible directly from the Spinnaker Observation Lounge on deck 12. Uh, so if you enjoy a cigar, this is the place for you. Um, so it's uh, not a huge space, but you know, usually not very busy, uh, but a lot of comfortable chairs and you still have some really nice uh, windows there on the front of the ship to look out. The Mandera Salon and Spa. So we're just going to take a peek in the door here. Uh, it's, they're not open yet, uh, but this is where you go for your salon and your spa services. And then the Pulse Fitness Center. Uh, the Pulse Fitness Center opens at 6 a.m. every day. And so this is a little bit after 6 a.m. So uh, not really anybody in there yet except for one person. Um, and so it doesn't get very crowded early in the morning, but mid to late morning, it's pretty busy. There's also some space here for uh, classes. Uh, that, that empty space was used for like stretching and yoga, and then here's your uh, spin class. So now headed out to the pool deck on deck 12. Got a lot of uh, tables. Uh, that, that's a place where you could you know, bring your food out from the uh, buffet. Here's the Waves pool bar uh, right next to the pool on deck 12. Again, Alaska Cruise. Uh, that pool deck is not used a whole lot. Uh, so again, you know, people definitely use the hot tubs, uh, really did not use the pool, and really not a lot of people hanging out here. Uh, it's just, you know, it's pretty chilly. Weather was actually pretty good for an Alaska cruise, but still not really warm enough to get a suntan or uh, hang out on the pool deck too much. But you can definitely see this area getting used a lot uh, during cruises in the, sun, in, in the warmer climates. Uh, a little shot of the beer garden up there, uh, up one level. They also do have a beverage station here um, at, the, uh, at the pool deck. So you've got ice water, ice, got some juices, milk, coffee, tea, and then you've got a little uh, Starbucks uh, machine there. The little Starbucks machine is an extra price. Everything else that we saw there is complimentary. A little bit more seating on the other side of the pool. Those really tall windows are uh, coming up from the atrium. 
and then a really large uh, screen and uh, stage for uh, music and sail away and that type of thing. All right, so headed into the Garden Cafe on deck 12, which is right next to the pool deck. You've got seating on both sides of the ship, and then all the food is in the middle. So it's breakfast time. Surprisingly, for such a small ship, uh, they had two soft serve machines for ice cream and then two stations for hard scoop. So that was interesting. Now here's your uh, pastries and your dry cereals and your muffins. Uh, there's a shot of the hard scoop ice cream. Typically they had strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla, and then Rocky Road or some other alternative uh, fourth option. Get your fresh fruit, there's your bread area. Really a lot to choose from in this buffet. We typically prefer the main dining room for uh, dinner in the evenings and then we'll typically get something uh, quick here at the buffet for breakfast uh, if we're not at the local and we'll see the local in a few more minutes. Another example of the beverage stations that they have, so coffee, uh, decaf and regular hot water for making tea, a few different teas to choose from, milk, there's your juices, water and then ice. Here's a shot of the seating on the other side of the ship. Pancakes and French toast. Got bacon, sausage. The fruit compote on top of the French toast was a good choice for me number of different hot choices and then a few different omelet making stations. So the omelet making stations were popular uh, but there were a few of them. I think there were three different stations so you didn't have to wait very long. A shot of your cheeses and cold cuts, some yogurt and yogurt toppings. Okay, on to by Scarpetta is Norwegian's Italian specialty restaurant. On deck 12 near the uh, Garden Cafe, uh, it has its own bar area. Really pretty space. Uh, I was really impressed by this design. Just really, really pretty. So you can buy specialty dining packages. Also, typically most of the Norwegian fairs will ha have their free at sea program, which will include one specialty dining meal for interior and ocean view, and then two specialty dining meals for balcony and above. So the great outdoors is the outdoors, obviously, area that's just outside the garden cafe. So you can bring your food out here. Uh, here's another uh, beverage station. Exact same setup as they had inside the uh, garden cafe. But if you want to come outside and enjoy the, the outdoors, again, completely protected by the wind, so not, not, not windy at all. Uh, you've, you've got uh, most of the area is also covered. There are some areas there at the end that are uh, in the sunshine. Nice bar area. Uh, really good service at these bars on the Norwegian Spirit. Very rarely had to wait very long. Some more shots of the seating in the great outdoors. And over here to the right, you can see how it's tiered. So you've got loungers on that lower tier, lower couple of tiers, and then the next couple of tiers up, you've got 
uh, two-person high top tables. Really nice area to come out and enjoy a meal. Here's your Spice H2O bar. That's what they call the pool area down there on deck 10 in the back of the ship. So again, you've got the, the pool in the back of the ship. You've got um, all of these loungers. They, it's still pretty early in the morning, so they haven't put out the, uh, the padding that's gonna go on all those loungers. A good sized pool and then the two hot tubs uh, looking out the back of the ship. The two hot tubs looking out the back of the ship, uh, even for an Alaska cruise, really popular. But I really found all this area on the back of the ship, all this public space, you know, again, deck 10, 11, 12, and 13, um, all of that on the back of the ship, completely open to uh, all uh, guests. Just a really nice area. So we're gonna get a little close up of the hot tub here, and you can imagine how it would be to uh, sit in this hot tub and enjoy the view um, out the back of your ship. Trade Winds is your shopping area on Deck 8. Got a little cut through there from uh, one side of uh, Deck 8 to the other side where the you've got the atrium and the glass elevators going up and down. So here's our shops on uh, Deck 8. So they surround uh, the atrium area that's below on Deck 7. So a number of shops here, uh, again, around the atrium, and then there's going to be one additional shop uh, that's more of your uh, souvenirs and t-shirts um, that's going to be behind uh, this bar area that's directly in front of us. Okay, we're over on the other side of Deck 8 now looking at the other shops. And a quick look down at the atrium below that's the coffee shop they are down in front of us uh, that screen gets used um, a lot for uh, presentations uh, it gets used for uh, entertainment here's some of the, the seating area that's up on deck eight those little uh, cubby holes there were, were really popular and this is around magnum's champagne bar you can see the grand piano there in the background. They had a piano player that was there just about every evening. Uh, the, the music rotates around the ship a little bit, but you know because the grand piano is here, typically that's where the piano player would be each evening. And then the, you can hear the music uh, down on deck seven in the atrium if you are hanging out there. Here's a shot in the evening where it's a little, uh, a little busier. I think we've got some uh, music down on uh, deck seven in front of the screen. So typically, you've got you know five different uh, bands, groups, musicians that uh, rotate around the ship. Uh, so you've got multiple choices for uh, musical entertainment each night in addition to the you know, big production casts. All right, so here's Tide's Boutique. This is more of the uh, souvenir, you know, t-shirt, sunglasses, sweatshirt kind of place. Maybe some purses. And again, this is located right behind a Magnum Champagne Bar that we just looked at right next to the photo gallery. And here's the photo gallery. So when you get your uh, picture taken by any of the professional photographers on the ship, uh, they will uh, have that uh, photograph available to you here electronically and you would just come and swipe your key card and take a look at the picture and 
see if you like it, see if you want to buy it, and you can buy individual photos or you can buy photo packages. A common staple on uh, most cruises uh, still today is the, uh, the art gallery and the art auction. Uh, so that's what we're taking a look at, some of the art choices. Okay, so here's uh, Silk, Teppanyaki, and the Sushi Bar. So we've got three restaurants all put together in one uh, common location. So here's the uh, Sushi Bar. Uh, sushi Bar is not included. Yeah, that is an additional fee. You could use your specialty dining package to dine there, um, or you could you know, pay a la carte. And then you've got Silk. Silk is complimentary Chinese food. Very good. And then here, teppanyaki is your hibachi, where they will cook the food in front of you on the grill. And again, that's also specialty dining. Oh, Silk, the complimentary Chinese restaurant, uh, is very popular. It does not take reservations. And so if you do want to get a seat, you may have to wait a little bit. Uh, we didn't have to wait very long. Okay, deck seven, we've got the Stardust Theater. This is the theater for the big uh, production shows. Typically, you're going to have uh, one show uh, that's shown twice nightly, maybe except for the, uh, the first night of the cruise. Typically, you're going to have three uh, Broadway-style musicals with a production cast, a magician show one night, uh, some type of uh, acrobat another night and then a uh, juggler another night and uh, possibly a, a special guest singer seats are comfortable have a nice uh, drink holders, then you've got a little bit of seating up there on each side, uh, not a lot. Um, one side is reserved for uh, sweet guests, and then the other side is just open to first come, first serve. Uh, the, the seats up there, because there aren't very many, did go pretty quickly, uh, but the uh, given the size of the auditorium to the size of the ship, uh, you really didn't have a problem getting seats uh, in the main part of the theater. Cagney Steakhouse. So this is the uh, steak specialty dining. This is what we used our specialty dining package for on this particular uh, cruise. Really, really good. Um, they do have non-steak options. If, if you know, uh, somebody in your group, steak is not their thing. So there, there, there are some seafood options that are included in the menu, but obviously they're uh, known for their uh, steak. Uh, the fillets are just really, really good. Uh, the service at these specialty restaurants is just phenomenal. So, I mean, the main dining room is great, and we love the main dining room, but these specialty dining restaurants, they really take the uh, service up a notch. That's really outstanding. So if you're into steak, it's definitely a great choice to use for your specialty dining package. Okay, in the atrium on deck seven, this is where you're gonna find your guest services. Lost and found, which it seems like I lose something every cruise. Here's your coffee shop. So they do serve uh, Starbucks coffee, and so it's not a full-blown Starbucks, but they do uh, make and serve uh, Starbucks drinks. There's your shore excursions desk. So they'll help you with uh, picking out any uh, shore excursions that you're looking to do. Uh, the information there on the screens is pretty good to show you what um, excursions still had space and when those excursions would be going. So that was helpful even if the staff weren't at the desk. Then they use that uh, stage in front of the big screen uh, for uh, musical acts and then they can use the screen for uh, game shows and slide presentations. I think they're doing a little bit of a safety uh, information session here on how to how to stay safe but you know a variety of information on the different ports that you're going into and the different shore excursion options. I can see the glass elevators there in the background and 
Uh, this atrium, just a really, really pretty space. All right, just off the atrium, you've got Henry's Pub. Oh, your British style pub. Not a big space, as you can see, uh, but you know, it's cozy. Typically would get pretty popular for trivia. This is one of the locations where they have uh, trivia in the evenings and it would be jam packed. Um, they have a musician here every evening as well. Typically um, either a solo guitar player or uh, a duo uh, with a guitar player and then a singer. Um, but really good service here. This is one of those places where uh, you typically would not have to go up to the bar to get a drink, that the servers are going to come out to you um, well before you're in need of something, so you're really never going to have to get up unless that's what you want to do. Right there in front of the statue is the area where the singer would typically perform. Okay, the local bar and grill. So this is a, a somewhat of a unique uh, dining option for Norwegian Cruise Line. And so this is a complimentary restaurant that is open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late into the evening. And so it's, you know, it's American kind of style breakfast, uh, but you know, if you're wanting to go light with just some fruit um, and some grains, you can certainly do that. And then more of like pub style food for lunch and dinner, and then a full service bar as well. Lots of seating. Uh, again, they don't take reservations, but rarely a line here because, you know, they're open all day and all night. So you just walk up to the desk and tell them how many people you need and they'll seat you and uh, you'll get to it. All right, Le Bistro is the French specialty dining restaurant for Norwegian. It's a very elegant space. So if you're looking for something a little bit more romantic, the Le Bistro, the French restaurant, is probably your best choice if you're uh, willing to uh, go for French food. A really nice space here in Le Bistro. Okay, we're gonna head into the casino and then we'll, you can see there the social comedy club. Uh, you actually have to go through the casino to get into that comedy club. There's no other way to get there. Um, we're gonna take a look at the casino first. So we just took a look at the slot machines. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of slot machines as in uh, any uh, cruise ship casino. And you've got your table games. So with the exception of the Social Comedy Club, this is all the way forward on deck seven. So you really didn't, you know, if you're not into gambling, you really didn't have to go into that space um, unless you were, you know, going there intentionally. Uh, they've got a room off to the side for the high rollers. And we're gonna head into the Social Comedy and Nightclub. So again, you walk through the casino to get here. Got a really nice uh, seating area here with a fake fireplace to make it feel cozy for you. So the eclectic seating options. And then a full bar. actually go even back a little bit further to get into the, the rest of the club area. So this area was primarily used for the uh, karaoke contests. But you can see they've got a small stage there and uh, seating that is facing the stage. And then on the sides, you've got some you know, 
comfortable seating for hanging out in. Okay, still on deck seven, we've got the promenade deck that goes all the way around the ship. So walking, no jogging, you've got a couple of sharp uh, curves, so you don't recommend uh, going jogging here. here. Here's the outside of Henry's Pub that we saw a minute ago. But really nice place to get a walk and enjoy uh, watching the waves go by. I think it said four laps was 1.4 miles around. Got a shuffleboard space um, on each side of the ship. Coming around to the rear of the ship, that those steps right there, interestingly, go all the way from deck seven up to Spice H2O on deck 10. So all that area is open to the public. All right, Taste is one of the two main dining rooms on deck six. So Taste is the smaller of the two main dining rooms. Each of them serve the exact same menu in the evenings. Typically just one of them is going to be open uh, for breakfast or lunch and then they'll both be open for dinner. Norwegian dining allows uh, freestyle dining so you do not have to have a reservation. You can just show up. If you want to have a reservation so you've got a time locked in, you can do that as well. And then Windows is the other of the two main dining rooms. It is the larger of the two. And of course, it gets its name because it has a lot of windows, including uh, some really uh, big, bright windows at the very back of the ship. But this was our choice for dining each evening, uh, except for the night that we used the uh, specialty dining option. A really good service, really good food. We enjoyed the variety of food. If you're gonna have appetizers, uh, entree, and dessert, uh, you probably need to plan for close to two hours. Occasionally we would be trying to squeeze it in in an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. And, we would be rushing uh, to our next event. So I'd recommend planning for two hours if you want to enjoy you know, the full meal with the appetizer, entree, uh, dessert with coffee. I hope you enjoyed this full ship tour of the beautiful Norwegian spirit. We had a great time on this ship and I think that you will too.